This video shows you how Bohr diagrams can be used to illustrate how atoms bond together with covalent bonds. A covalent bond is formed when two atoms move together and share valence electrons. A simple example is the bond between two hydrogen atoms in a diatomic molecule of hydrogen, H2. Recall that the number on top of the symbol for an element in the periodic table is the atomic number, which is the number of protons. It is also the number of electrons in a neutral atom of the element. The number below the element symbol on the periodic table is called the atomic mass. When rounded to a whole number, it is generally equal to the total number of protons plus neutrons in the most common form, or isotope, of the element. From the atomic number, we can see that every atom of hydrogen has one proton and a neutral atom of hydrogen has one electron. Using hydrogen's atomic mass, we can see that the total number of protons and neutrons is equal to one. Since hydrogen has one proton, it will have one minus one equals zero neutrons. So the Bohr model for a neutral hydrogen atom would look like this. Notice that a single hydrogen atom has an unpaired electron. This means it is unstable. Now we'll draw another hydrogen atom beside the first one. Of course, this one also has an unpaired electron, making it unstable. Let's see what happens as these two hydrogen atoms approach each other. Here's what we get. At this point, the two valence electrons are equally shared between the two hydrogen atoms. These shared electrons form a bond between the two hydrogen atoms. It is called a covalent bond. The hydrogen atom on the left now feels like it has two electrons, so it has the same electron arrangement as an atom of the noble gas helium. Therefore, it is stable. The hydrogen atom on the right also feels like it has two electrons, giving it the stable electron arrangement of the noble gas helium. So as long as these two hydrogen atoms are bonded together, each one has the stability of a noble gas. This is the Bohr diagram for a diatomic molecule of hydrogen, H2. H2 is a stable molecule because as long as these two electrons are shared, each atom has noble gas stability. Group 17 elements, the halogens, also form diatomic molecules. Let's have a look at the Bohr model for a single atom of chlorine. Here it is. It has 17 protons and 17 electrons, and the most common isotope of chlorine has 18 neutrons. Notice that a chlorine atom has 7 valence electrons, as shown by the light blue circles. There are 3 pairs of valence electrons, and this single electron is unpaired. Let's show another chlorine atom on the right. We'll color the valence electrons of this atom pink. Here is the unpaired electron in the chlorine atom on the right. Let's see what happens as these two atoms move toward each other. Here's what we get. When the two previously unpaired electrons are shared, this forms a covalent bond. The chlorine atom on the left feels like it has 18 electrons, the same electron arrangement as the noble gas argon. And the chlorine atom on the right also feels like it has 18 electrons, the same electron arrangement as the noble gas argon. So as long as these two atoms are bonded covalently, both have noble gas stability. We can also see that the chlorine atom on the left has four pairs of electrons in its valence shell, as shown by the four pairs of light blue electrons. Thus, we can say it has a stable octet. We can also see that the chlorine atom on the right has four pairs of electrons in its valence shell, as shown by the four pairs of pink electrons. Thus, we can say that it also has a stable octet. Note that these two shared electrons are part of stable octets of both of the chlorine atoms. The pair of electrons that are being shared in a covalent bond is called a bonding pair. A pair of electrons that is not being shared for a covalent bond is called a lone pair. So here is the Bohr diagram for a molecule of Cl2, 
with a covalent bond between the two Cl atoms. Next, we'll look at the formation of water, H2O. Here is the Bohr model for an oxygen atom. Its six valence electrons are shown here as light blue circles. We can see that an oxygen atom has two unpaired electrons in its valence shell. In order for this oxygen atom to end up with a stable octet, two more electrons would need to be added to its valence shell. Now we'll add two hydrogen atoms, each with one unpaired electron in its valence shell. The two hydrogen atoms now move toward the oxygen atom. This gives us a molecule of water, H2O. This molecule has two covalent bonds. In each covalent bond, a pair of electrons is being shared between hydrogen and oxygen. The two pairs of electrons that form the covalent bonds are called bonding pairs. Notice that a water molecule also has two lone pairs. Lone pairs are not used in bonding. The oxygen atom has a stable octet in its valence shell. And each hydrogen atom has a pair of electrons, giving it the stable electron arrangement of the noble gas helium. A gas used widely in industry is ammonia, NH3. Let's use Bohr diagrams to look at the formation of a molecule of ammonia. Here is a nitrogen atom with three unpaired electrons in its valence shell. To form a molecule of ammonia, three hydrogen atoms bond to this nitrogen atom. And this is the Bohr diagram for a molecule of ammonia, NH3. We can see that the nitrogen atom has a stable octet. And each hydrogen is stable because it has a pair of electrons like the noble gas helium. In the molecule, these three pairs of electrons are called bonding pairs because each pair forms a covalent bond. And this pair on top is called a lone pair as it is not involved in bonding. Because an atom of the element carbon can have four unpaired electrons in its valence shell, a carbon atom is capable of forming four covalent bonds. This gives rise to a large variety of covalent compounds containing carbon. Here is the Bohr model for a common carbon compound called ethane, C2H6. Ethane is one of the components of natural gas. If we circle each bonding pair, you can see that this molecule has seven bonding pairs and seven covalent bonds. The carbon atom on the left has a stable octet. And the carbon atom on the right also has a stable octet. And each hydrogen atom has a pair of electrons, like the noble gas helium. So all the atoms in this molecule are stable as long as they remain connected by these seven covalent bonds. Bohr diagrams provide us with a useful model for visualizing how atoms form covalent bonds by sharing unpaired valence electrons. But keep in mind that Bohr diagrams are only models. Modern models of atoms and molecules do not actually picture electrons in circular shells around the nucleus like these diagrams suggest. However, even though these are not accurate, they are relatively simple and they do help us understand why molecules form the way they do. So Bohr diagrams are still useful to us. Mm -hmm.